Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is session 14, part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue to discuss God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, focusing on the role God has and how God is and can be involved in our personal processes of forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 17th of April, 2018, from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Let's talk about how sincere prayer helps me to forgive and repent. Mm. So we've just been discussing these direct ways that God can interact with us and assist us in the forgiveness and repentance process through the conscience and through reception of God's love. Obviously, in order to receive God's love, we must engage with prayer. How does sincere prayer to God help me to forgive and repent? Well, you said in that introduction that, um, you know, obviously with, to receive God's love, we must have sincere prayer. But I think even to receive God's truth, you have to have rece- mm. sincere prayer eventually. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to get yep. to the stage where you want the truth. Mm. And wanting something with a, with a pure desire is prayer. Yeah. So you could say two steps. First step is wanting the truth really from a pure desire. Mm. Now, what I notice is a lot of people think they want the truth, but there's not much of a desire for it. You tell them the truth and they're all of a sudden angry. So, you know, there's not a strong desire for it. The majority of people who are still enraged with me today are people who have come to me, who liked me, come to me, asked me for some personal help, and I told them the truth and they hate my guts after that. So Mm. that's an indication that the sincere desire for truth is not there. Yeah. Right. So, so number one, sincere desire for truth. Now, what is sincere desire for anything? Well, it's a prayer yeah. for that thing. Yeah. So having a sincere desire for truth is a prayer for truth. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, a prayer for truth that comes from our heart is going to help us remove the impediments to the conscience. Mm-hmm. Right. And remember, we said two, two, two uh, questions ago that the conscience is the first way that God helps us directly. Yeah. So, so my having a sincere longing for truth, a prayer for truth, mm-hmm. is going to help in this having a relationship with God through the, through the conscience mechanism. Yeah. That's number one. The second thing is as you raised, and that is the prayer for love. Mm-hmm. What is prayer for love? It's a sincere desire for love. Yes. Right? Where you really want to have God's love in your life and you really want to also have other people's love in your life and you to love other people. Mm -hmm. A sincere desire to do it. What I observe is a a lot of people give a a lot of lip service, but when it comes to relationships, they're only interested in addictions being met. Mm. And that is not a sincere desire for love. Yeah. So that's not a prayer for love. Yeah. That's a prayer for selfishness. Yes. Right. And it's not a prayer for love. Yeah. So, so prayer is obviously going to help me to forgive and repent mm. because firstly, prayer for truth exposes the truth to me. And mm-hmm. now I can see around me clearly what I need to forgive and what I need to repent for. And then also a prayer for love, mm-hmm. having a sincere desire for God's love, a sincere longing for it, causes God's love to enter me. And this makes me more sensitive, as we've already discussed. Mm-hmm. So now I'm able to be more sensitive to when I've been unloving mm. and also when others have been unloving to me. Mm-hmm. So, so it's going to have a wonderful effect <laughs> on me. The other thing it does, and, and this is the mechanism of prayer, Prayer opens your heart. It mm. softens you. It basically says, I want this thing. Yeah. And in desiring it from a heartfelt perspective, causes your heart to be open to receiving it. Mm. If you don't want something, you won't receive it. You've got to first want it mm-hmm. to receive it. Mm-hmm. And this applies to anything pretty much in your life. You know, you, as, as the average person knows when they go out and buy a car, if they really want a car that they really want, they'll work out a way to get it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and if they really want a, a relationship, they'll work out a way to get that relationship, you know? And unfortunately, many people do very many unloving things to do that. But desire drives the, the result in mm-hmm. almost every case. 
if you don't want to build your own house, you won't ever build your own house. You yeah. won't. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, go to another country, you never will. <laughs> That's the reality. <laughs> yeah. You have to want it and you have to want it enough that it's a desire inside of you, a pure desire inside of you that you work towards it. That's what you've got to do. Mm. This is what prayer does. Prayer determines what you want, truly want in your heart. And the longing that you have for love and the longing you have for truth opens your heart to both love and truth. Mm. This now makes you sensitive to both of those things. And in being more sensitive to both of those things, you now know when you sinned against those things. Yes. And it's a natural result of being, becoming more sensitive. Yeah. So prayer is an important part of open. It's your part that you play. So while we said God has this direct method of conscience and God has this direct method of giving you love, of yeah. course, both of those direct methods are very much determined. Their effectiveness is completely determined by the desires of your own soul. Mm -hmm. So without prayer, yep. you're stuffed, <laughs> really. <laughs> you know, those desires will never be exercised and, and, and never be... Um, engaged so without prayer you basically are unable to sort the issues of truth out in your life and you're unable to sort the issues of love out in your mm -hmm. life and what i see is the majority of people still do not engage prayer even the people who've been listening for years and years and years don't engage prayer daily they don't engage a longing for truth and they don't engage a longing for love so, you know, without those things happening, your, your heart's not going to be open and sensitive to the reception of those things. Mm. All right. Can I ask you some questions now specifically about sincerity in prayer? Mm -hmm. So I agree with you and I've been one of those people who for many years I just, I knew I should long for love and truth. Yes. Uh, Most people who hear divine truth know they should. <laughs> well, and but there's a problem with the should I came to of learn. Of course, of course. Um, but the fact that it, it's not, it wasn't an honest reflection of what was in my heart. And not an honest reflection of what's happening in your life. Yes. So, so true prayer would be demonstrated in the actions you take in your life. Yes. So if your actions don't mirror the so-called longing you have, mm -hmm. that's proof that the longing is non-existent. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what I used to do is lie down and go, well, I know I'm not sincere, so I'm not, I'm not even going to engage. So I'm not even going to bother crying. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so really this, I'm asking you about the development of sincerity because there's this other thing that I can do and which I do now, which is to open my heart to God because part of my resistance was about feeling like I don't even want to go near you, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I'm angry is what I didn't want to feel. Mm. And so it seems to me that this development of a sincere longing, we must go through the development of a desire to feel what our real longings are to fit and to engage with God in that process of exploration of the real longings yeah. in order for us to become sincere in a longing for love and truth. Yes, I, I, think, uh, I think that's almost self-evident, but obviously it's not for most people because that's not what I observe them doing. I, I really don't think it is. I think yeah. it's very natural for you, but I really feel like when I hear... Um, when I hear people talking and when I first met you, this, oh, just have a sincere longing for truth. I just went, well, I'm too honest. So I would just go, I don't have one. So screw that, you know. <laughs> but, but I see other people go, I will have a sincere desire for truth. Yeah, so they're even in a facade about it. Yeah, yeah well, maybe. <laughs> like, I, I will have a sincere yeah. desire for truth, but my whole life is showing me I don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, I guess my question is about this. This is real, isn't it? This engagement emotionally with God on the issue of truth and on the issue of love. It's very different, it feels to me, to me engaging it on my own. Yes, it's, it's sort of like, uh, well, I feel there's a number of aspects to what you're saying. The first, the first thing is when we're honest, we are honest. And yeah. honest means being really honest about, no, I don't have a desire. Or mm -hmm. no, is it really that you don't have a desire or are you just angry? Mm. You know, my, for most people, 
It's not that they don't have a desire. It's just they're angry. They they want it their way. Yeah. Like I've said to you many times, you, know, you just want it your yeah. way, not God's way. That's yeah. what you're angry about. Be angry about it. But yeah. <laughs> be honest about your anger about mm -hmm. it. You know, be honest about the fact you want it your way, not God's way. You want love to be your way, not God's way. You want your addictions met. You don't want to have to do that God's way. Be, you need to be honest about that because mm -hmm. unless you're honest about that, you're never going to have a sincere longing mm. ever. Like you can, you can think you have one, but you don't. Mm. Right? You've got to be honest about what's really going on in your relationship with God and what you really feel and how angry you really are because the whole world is angry about God, honestly. Yep. You know, you, half the world doesn't want to believe in God mm -hmm. and the other half who does believe in God is still angry about God yeah. and they're still like frustrated with God and furious with God and wonder why God does this to them and God does that to them mm -hmm. and God's doing this and God's a bastard anyway, well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. even though they believe in God. So yeah. it's like every everybody on the planet almost is angry with God. Yeah. We talk about God in, in a seminar and man, it's like switch off for most mm -hmm. people. In, instant switch off mm -hmm. as soon as you mention the word god three letter word god is the is the you know one one word that most people just completely detune from yeah that's all demonstration of the rage that exists yeah. right you know, to, towards and about god mm -hmm. you've got to get real about that with god yes because if you don't get real about that with god you're not sincere and if you don't if you're not sincere you can't be sincere and longing mm. for something mm. Right. And and I also feel there's another aspect here where um, this sensitivity to pain through the operation of compensation that we've spoken about in the course of this series, mm. that had to reach a point for me where it, for me to develop enough sincerity. Like I could have a tantrum with God before then, but I, I'm very headstrong as we often discuss and stubborn. Um, and it took it's taken me a lot of years to really feel, okay, God, <laughs> I don't actually have this figured out. My life hurts and I hurt and maybe I need to reassess my attitudes towards love and truth mm. and do that with you rather mm. than um, kind of blame you. Because Yeah, what I feel most people do is they hear divine truth and they go, yeah, it all sounds real good, right? Yeah. Um, and, and they feel this uh, resonance with it in their soul generally. Mm -hmm. But but they don't, don't get real about what's what they really feel. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the world itself has tu tuned us into believing that facade is what is 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 the truth, you mm. know. Whatever your facade is is what you really are, is what the world will accept. God doesn't accept your facade as real, you mm -hmm. know. For, to God it's just a figment of your imagination. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And uh, and oftentimes the imagination of your parents who, who assisted you in creating it. Yeah. It's just a, a total unreal perspective from God's from God's viewpoint. Yeah. So so God's there looking at your facade and you're saying, oh, I really would like to receive God. God's saying, what a bunch of crap, really. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, no, you don't. Like, hey, this is how you feel. Get yeah. honest with how you feel yeah. with me. Then we might get somewhere mm. is really. And in a lot of ways, that's the same as a relationship, isn't it? If you really want to cure the ills in a relationship, yeah. each party has to get honest mm. with what they really feel, how much baggage there is, mm -hmm. how much resentment there is, how much hatred there is, how much, how much you know, feelings of uh, like, um, like sadness there are about you know, what's happened mm. in the relationship that uh, you have to get real about all that mm. and feel it mm. if you really want to you know work through the issues in a relationship most people don't do that do they what they do in their relationships is just totally zone out of that totally cover it all over try to suppress it for as mm. long as possible and then when they can't they spend less and less time together but still say they're in a relationship yeah. so they end up spending more time at work or more time with their mates or friends than they do even in a relationship mm -hmm. because there's too much pain for them to talk about in the relationship and eventually the relationship obviously is just even if they're still married after 50 years it's not a very good marriage frequently yeah. right or it's a co complete opposite, a marriage of complete codependence and addiction, where mm. nobody's really honest about how much they want the other person to meet their addictions and how yeah. much the other person has to do that. Yeah. So, so these kind of things are not going to be acceptable to God. Mm. Right? What, and the same kind of relationship can't be engaged with No, with, with God. God. Yeah. No. And, and what prayer, sincere prayer does, 
is opens your heart to seeing all that. Yeah. It helps you go, ah, wow, I'm really quite angry and frustrated and I really feel that God's going to either reject me or, or God already has rejected yeah. me. I, I'm angry with him or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like God's a man and I hate men mm -hmm. or God's a woman and I hate women or, yeah. you know, God doesn't care or God doesn't exist. I'd rather believe God doesn't exist than deal with all the pain that I have about, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that God might exist and I just don't understand, you know. You've got so much stuff, mm. so much baggage about God that we're unwilling to get honest about. Mm. And obviously the conscience is trying to help us, God through the conscience trying to help us, but we're not even willing to listen to mm. a lot of it because we're not willing to face the, the depth of the pain of it mm -hmm. frequently. And you've got to get yourself to the point when you go through this honest process, you've got to get yourself to the point where you're willing to see the pain you're in really and, and, and feel it and own it as, as my yours. own, not, yep. not as somebody not, else's, not God's creation. In fact, you know, that's, I feel where sincerity begins for me in my prayer is to say, God, I feel this gear and I feel really, really, whatever I feel. Um, I want to get to this place where I'm longing, <laughs> but I'm not there yet. Well, and I want to that, give up what is there. To me, that know? conversation with God that comes from your heart is a start of <laughs> getting to a place where you have some longing. Yeah. If you don't get there, if, if, if people haven't been there, then they haven't even started yet. Yeah. Right? That's the reality. You've got to get there. Yeah. And if you, if you can get there and start, then you'll start to feel the benefits of such honesty and openness with God. Mm. And God will also, because you have that prayer for truth now, mm -hmm. God now can share the truth with you. And, and that, that also helps you develop a longing for love. Mm. you know, sincere longing for love rather than just something that's trite or, or, or you know, rote yeah. in terms of the way that we re interact yeah, with, with and God and others. Really. I, I guess I wanted to raise that here because we're talking about how sincere prayer helps me forgive and repent. And we've often, you've often spoken in previous discussions that all sincere prayer is answered by God. What I feel that I've done historically is sort of, it's like in now, I feel like there's this big, thick brick wall that between me and God, you mm -hmm. know, and all of that is my injury. Mm -hmm. And I would come and up. Could you say, let's define your injury. It's like your injuries are also your false beliefs that you want to hold on to and believe are real. Totally. As well as the emotional pain and suffering that you've experienced in the past. Mm. And the memories that you feel you have and all these kind of things all mixed together, isn't it? That wall is yeah. a combination of all those things. Yeah, I suppose I think of the beliefs as the biggest thing blocking me. From they God. are, but they are all uh, established through the history of emotions that you've yeah. avoided. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Or that you've been taught to avoid. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and so I guess, um, you know, I've been quite hard on myself historically and, and come up to the wall, if you like, to pray mm -hmm. and, you know, <laughs> long to God. And uh, even in my most sincere moments, it, what I thought were most sincere, I, I didn't feel that response of love from God. And so I went away from the wall and thought, I've got to deal with all that baggage with God. And then once that's gone, I know sincere prayer is going to be answered and then I'll have this connection with God. And this new process feels to me very sincere and it seems to be prayerful, but I'm not yet receiving love, but it is, God, I'm here at this wall. You are receiving truth though. Yes, that's true. So, you know, the first part of that mechanism has begun. Yeah. The mechanism of, ah, oh, now, because I'm now getting honest yeah. about what's inside of me, about God and about, you know, the things that I feel angry about with God and so forth, now I'm being honest about it. Now the truth is being received mm. through your conscience. So now you're mm. getting truth very, very rapidly now. Mm. Like, you know, yesterday you were saying how, you know, just hundreds of different things yeah. came to you in the moment yeah. of, in the course of a day. And that and that is what is going to be the first thing that happens. Mm. You know, the truth, there will be all this truth about, oh, I see this and I see I've done that and I see I've done this and see others have done that and mm. it's all very clear. It mm. becomes very clear very rapidly. Yes, and I suppose I wanted to say that in encouragement for our viewers because it took a lot of pain out here in my life, in my self-reliance, in compensatory pain, mm. for me to really come to the wall and go, okay, God, I've got some stuff here. I'm, I want to give it up now. But, man, there's a lot of stuff and it's angry and it's sad and it's fearful and all these things, but I'm going to do it with you in the... It, 
I want discussing it with to you. keep looking at you almost through the wall, mm. discussing it with you to get through this wall rather than mm. me coming up to the wall and saying, well, I'm not receiving love. I'll go back to my life and try and figure out this mess through all the compensation and the, whole, and the laws. And the. And can I say the whole, oh, I'm not receiving love, so I'm just going to go back to that whole idea is anger. It's all rage yeah. anyway. So, at which I directed sometimes outwardly, but sometimes, sometimes at, at myself a lot. Yeah, sometimes yeah. at yourself, sometimes yeah. outwardly, but it's still rage. Yeah. And and it obviously isn't sincerity when we're enraged, because yeah. enrage, rage is all about control. Mm. It's all about holding on to beliefs that we don't mm. want to confront and mm. let go of and so forth. So so even our passive aggressiveness is, is really our rage being mm. expressed in different ways. Mm -hmm. And we have a huge amount of passive aggressiveness with God yeah. that we need to address and we yeah. need to get sincere about it. Yeah. And, and when we get sincere about it, the very first thing that flows is truth. Because mm. now our conscience mechanism has the ability to operate. God's now saying, oh, I can respond to this desire in the person. Mm. You know, I'm going to pump some things through this conscience <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> pum, 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 you know. <laughs> Some truths come through very rapidly, yeah. and then we have a decision of what to do about them. Of course, the second stage of that is opening our pr prayer opens our heart sensitivity, sensitively to emotion. Mm. So, so we now start feeling as well as a subsequent result. Mm. So we'll feel more. Mm. And as we feel more, we now are in a stronger state to have a heartfelt feeling for God. Yeah. So, you know, it all helps. The process is a seamless sort of a process if we engage it mm. but that's not what generally happens what generally happens is most people you know try the trite rote mm. you know thing from the mind or the thing from their facade you know i've got to do this or mm. this thing from the side i'm so wonderful i'm in this relationship with god when they're nowhere near it mm -hmm. and they do that uh, and then wonder why their life's still the same life they had 10 years ago because yeah. nothing's changed of course, nothing's changed because they haven't changed yeah. and, and nothing, you know, there's no truth flowing. There's no none of God's love flowing. And, and so now the law is going to pummel them into submission, basically, mm, yeah. you know, along with some help that God can give through external parties and so forth, if they ever listen to it. But people in that state generally don't yeah. listen to that either. Yeah. So, you know, basically, in the end of the day, it's just the law that's going to hammer you to hammer you into submission. You know, yeah. that's all you consign your, your whole life is now consigned to just response to law response mm. to law and usually to the law you broke yeah or tried to break you yep. know so it's going to be quite painful so yep. we can step over all of that with prayer and that's mm. why prayer is such an important part of this process of forgiveness and repentance you can mm. step over all of this hard road thing that mm. goes on in the world and and like i said most people pass over into the spirit world in a hard hard place in their heart you know mm. and uh it's and even if they do pass into second sphere or something like that there's still a lot of baggage there mm. um regarding god and relationship and everything that needs to be worked through it's interesting isn't it because and i think we've commented on this before but such was my resistance to god that i preferred i mean i've lived eaten and breathed divine truth for 10 years but I don't know if I could agree with that. No, but, <laughs> but the, the the talk, the talk, the talk yeah, of it, I, which, I'm not saying I've lived it. I, yeah. Um, well, as we've discussed recently, I don't feel you, you know, I only feel recently you've become to live it. So. The, sorry, that was going to be my point mm. is that I've, you know, I've been imbibing this stuff intellectually and also examining God's laws very closely and examining truth again intellectually and trying to figure everything out in a self-reliant way. And you've said that that is quite... Um, well, it's driven by fear. Yes, but that's the very painful way to do it. Yeah. But such has been my resistance to engaging with sincere prayer. Yeah. And that must be the same oh, for like the I world over. Oh, like I see that over. in everybody. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> Which is fascinating, isn't it, in yeah. itself? That yeah, shows it's like, us how much resistance we have to God. Yeah, you'd rather sit down and spend years and years of your life analysing something than you yes. would actually go through a process that involves emotion yes. that is sincere and truthful. Yes. And, and uh, like, I almost see everybody's like that. I, yeah. Like, I don't know if there's anybody I've met that isn't like that. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it is a it, it, like getting from that place to the place where you actually do the work emotionally is is a significant change mm. and and it is from then that you actually feel the benefits mm. of having the direct 
link. So, so most people I see, even who are hearing divine truth, most people are still engaging indirectly with God. And that has its trauma mm. because you, you know and you feel through some of the operation of consciousness, feel certain things are right and wrong, but you still don't do them. Mm. <laughs> you still don't do what's right and avoid what's wrong because your addictions and your demands and your selfishness are still driving your life. Mm. So at the end of the day, without this personal direct engagement and breaking through into the personal direct engagement, there is no real benefit to listening to divine truth because yeah. all you're really doing is listening. There's no <laughs> practice of it, you're and just you, hearing it. You and end, it, and it might be nice to hear, but mm. at the end of the day, it's not going to help much. Mm. And you end up uh, using, still living in your same injuries, but just kind of rationalising different things using divine truth language or punishing yourself with divine truth, you know, and stuff, stupid stuff like that, that yeah. is just because you're not dealing with your stuff. That's right. Yeah. That's right. When you when you stop judging what you have inside of you and you start being open and truthful and honest about it and you really get honest with God about that, now things can move. Mm. But when you keep judging what's inside of you, you keep trying to maintain your facade while having a relationship with God, cannot work because mm. God requires sincerity and truth. Mm. God requires a sincere longing. You can't do it in your facade. You can't. And most people believe they can still avoid they're, you know, the real stuff that they've got inside of them, they can just act in their facade that they really do want it, but they really don't. Mm. And their life is demonstrating to them they don't. But they're acting in their facade that they do. Mm -hmm. And so they're presenting a facade to God, hoping that that's going to do the job. Yeah. You know, it might do the job with your mum and dad, and it might do your job with your friends on earth, and it might do your job with your family you're living with, and it might even do the job with your partner that you have. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do the job with God. Yeah. And, and we've got to stop thinking that you know maintaining a facade even a facade about yourself mm. you know that you don't really have these feelings inside of you even maintaining that facade is not you know that's no good from god's perspective you <laughs> yeah. know so so god wants you to get real with him and god wants you to be real with you mm. now prayer is the way to get real mm. right that's how we get real but for most people we avoid prayer you know, most people pray, pray barely at all, mm. or if they do pray, it's usually, you know, in their facade rather than sincere. And there's certainly often not a desire for truth in it. Mm. And so and so, unless that desire for truth happens first, highly unlikely that the love is going to be received because you haven't got a longing for it. Yeah. You need to be in harmony with truth to get a longing for love. So these things are necessary parts of developing this direct relationship with God. And if we have that, direct relationship with God, we're going to find forgiveness and repentance a lot easier. Yeah. It's going to be a lot more smoother. We're going to do it a lot more rapidly. We're going to benefit from, from it sooner mm -hmm. if we do all of those things. But mm. unfortunately, most people don't do it. And so then they're left with the rest yeah. of what we're now going to discuss, the indirect <laughs> ways that God's still trying to help us have a breakthrough. Yeah. That's what most people are still focused on. But really, you've made it so clear that those direct ways are the, that's the, the best way you're ever going to. The quickest, the most efficient. The, and the most pain-free, The, pa the least painful way mm -hmm. to engage forgiveness and repentance. That's right. Yeah. yeah. We, you know, we often think that an emotionally painful process, uh, a short emotional painful process is much better than a long drawn out emotional painful process that's also physically painful. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know. That's why when they <laughs> when you dislocate their sho your shoulder, they don't go, okay, we're gradually going to put this in over yeah, the next let's, half an hour. Let's wrap it up <laughs> in a bandage and leave it for a few days. And we'll just move it a millimetre each day. No, we're no, going to go one, two, boom. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> And then it's good again, yeah, right? Yeah. And a lot of our a lot of our problems are like that. Yeah. We 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 are so we're nursing the pain, mm. trying to prevent ourselves from feeling it. When all we need is a good shove, and mm. and we often get through things. <laughs> God's going to give us a good shove in every direction we yeah. need to go, and and He's doing it because He knows He He knows the most pain free way to deal with something. Mm. You know, the least painful way of dealing with anything. God mm. knows. So he's going to try to lead you through that way. Majority of us are so worried about pain, emotional and physical, that you know we we spend all of our life trying to prevent it, yeah. rather than just go through what we need to go through as rapidly as possible, so we're over it. Mm -hmm. And and this is where prayer 
starts that process properly if it's sincere you know obviously prayer has to be sincere to work and once you have a sincere desire for truth you've begun the process of going through a painful quick painful process you get over it quickly sort things out it's long drawn out stuff it exhausts everyone around you it exhausts you it's not going to work anyway you're going to come away thinking oh what a waste of time yeah. and i've just wasted 10 years of my life and this is exactly how people feel they've yeah. heard divine truth for 10 years of their life still not made much change because they've not engaged the primary way that it needs to be engaged mm. and prayer has prayer for truth has not been uh, mm. the starting point for most people yeah and and as a result of that they're now in this state of oh, i'm tired of it i, I might as well just walk away and do mm. something else because this is all too hard yeah and and of course it is yeah. <laughs> because you're still doing it the old way while in your head you're hearing all this truth that you know what the old way is wrong <laughs> and so naturally it's going to be harder than not knowing the old way is wrong yeah yep. you <laughs> start to wish you never heard about it in the first place yeah and that's yeah. what i also observe a lot yeah. of people get to a point after three, four or five years of hearing divine truth is they wish they'd never heard it. Mm. And that's an indication they have not engaged God's way. Yeah. God's way of doing it is the direct way. Yeah. This direct way into your stuff, a direct way into your pain, direct way into a relationship with God, a truthful mechanism into your relationship with God. That's the, that's the fast way mm. to God. Now, most people don't engage it. So they, engage, they, they hear all the external truths. They like all that initially. And then they get to the point where they're very resistive to engaging this direct way. And so what do they do? They stop, they get all annoyed with it. And after a while, they just feel like, oh, it's all, I, I, I don't even want it. No, I like turning on a seminar, you know, a seminar or something about love and truth. Oh, I'm sick of hearing it, mm. you know? Mm. And the reason why you feel that way is because you haven't ad addressed the direct way. Mm. You know, when you address the direct way, you stay enthusiastic for truth because mm. it's wonderful mm. <laughs> and it's helping your life and you feel all the benefits every day of doing it. Why would you want to avoid it? You know, there's no... <laughs> but, but in a sense, if I turn it on um, and I feel like I want to avoid it, there's obviously pain there that I'm trying to avoid. So I do have the opportunity, don't I, to sit and f feel what i feel about it yeah but if That's you engage I... it directly with god and talk about your pain mm. with god every day and talk about what pain you're in and why you're in it and those just even the truth side of things mm. you know, not, not even yet the love side because you might feel yet that you don't really want god's love yet or whatever but if you just pray for truth start there mm. you're going to get there and 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 the more truth you get exposed eventually you'll soften up because you're praying mm. and that will lead you to some emotion once you feel some emotion you now be more open mm. once you feel more open you can progress you know it's the relief of of your suffering mm. that causes growth mm -hmm. not not the nursing of your suffering mm. you know and so what i see is most people ask question after question after question after question of me that all could be directed towards God. Mm -hmm. But why do they want to do that? Because they, they want somebody else to nurse their suffering. Mm -hmm. They want somebody else to validate to them why they should even begin with God. Yeah. And the more you waste time on that, mm. the more pointless the whole exercise is going to become. Yeah. You've got to focus your relationship on God first. And prayer is that key to, to open that. And if you don't do that, why bother even listening to the divine truth? Well, it might be good and it might, you know, you might think it's nice and everything, everything you hear. Sooner or later, you're going to get so exhausted by the mm. fact you're still fighting it, mm. right, that, that you might run away from it. You're better off just facing the fact right now. Most of the time I'm fighting it. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly because I don't have a relationship with God and I don't really want one. I don't, I'm confused about having one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't want to give up what I currently feel. I don't, I'm, I want my addictions met. I want I this don't think I it's that. worth it. I feel yeah. afraid. I feel like. Whatever um, it is, get real about yeah. it, but do it with God. Mm. You know, I don't have to know about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can't help you with it, to yeah. be honest. All I can do is expose you what's happening. Yeah. Uh, no other person in this universe can help you with it mm -hmm. you have to go through it with god it's with yeah. god the the problem is with god you're gonna have to fix it with god yeah so you know and that you can't fix it through somebody yeah you know there's no intermediary that can help you mm. so you know stop believing there is and get get on with the direct relationship with god and work your way through that then you'll come to the same conclusions as i've come to because we've got the same person as telling them the conclusion mm -hmm. 
God's telling us what the truth is. Yeah. Um, but you'll go through a process to do it, emotional process, which you'll need to go through, which will be maybe even intensely painful, but it will be short lived mm. in comparison to this long drawn out 100 years, 200 years, 500 year process that most of us have consigned ourselves to mm. because we do not wish to face the primary problems in our life. You know, so so I feel, yeah, this direct method, we can't, you know, hopefully, hopefully for all of you who have been listening to that little section, you see the importance of this direct method of, of you know, relationship with God in order to get through these particular problems. And the development of sincerity in prayer must happen with God. <laughs> you can't kind of privately mm. develop a sincerity to connect to God. No. You have to engage with God to develop that sincerity. Yeah. yeah. So uh, honestly, without without that part done, you're going to get tired. You're mm. going to feel exhausted. You're not going to do the work. Now, many people I know who've been listening for 10 years are only just starting doing that. Yeah. And and that's because I've been hammering them <laughs> mostly. You know, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere until you do it. You know what I mean? Like, you're just not. <laughs> and so this is real good that people do, but but it doesn't have to be 10 years before you make that decision, right? It can be an instant decision. You, you can start getting real from day one. You hear it. but Tune into the pain that you're currently in is something that you've said to me. And in particular yeah. with God, the pain yeah. you're in with God, the pain you're in about, you know, your life and the pain you're in about love, because mm. most of our pain is about love. Mm. So, you know, we need to tune into it. We need to feel it. Get truthful with God means that we can get the conscience mechanism open. Yeah. Now we've got a direct link with God, even though it's not love yet. Mm -hmm. Got the direct link with God, showing us where we're being and loving, showing us about our addictions, showing us all the things we need to know, and then being honest about. I want my addiction met, and blah, 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 you know, and big tantrum or whatever. Yeah. Whatever you feel, getting honest with those particular things and talking about God and how, how, yeah, I know, I'm just going through a bloody <laughs> tantrum again, you know, yeah. and and just yeah. get real honest with God about that as well. Mm -hmm. And eventually you have a breakthrough into receiving some of God's love. Yeah. And once you have that and the process continues, yeah. now you can change your life pretty rapidly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. But, it, but uh, if it doesn't continue, then what we're going to discuss next is what's going to be yours. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, we have a tendency then to be more open to listening to them and receiving mm -hmm. direction from them. So, mm -hmm. so, so God obviously utilizes that as a method to help others. And I suppose that's coupled, like compounded by the fact that usually people that God directs to assist us have gone through similar things to us. So again, we'd find them more relatable. Yes, Is that and uh, well, you know, for some of them, they are so distant uh, in terms of, you know, it's a distant memory for them that they mm. went through the same thing. So frequently we don't feel as connected to those people. But if a person is like in the spheres under the under at one moment with God, so mm -hmm. in the f second to the sixth or seventh sphere, mm -hmm. we often can feel still some of their sin in them, and therefore mm -hmm. we feel they're more relatable, and mm -hmm. therefore we f we're more open to listening to them. Unfortunately, yeah. um, but but obviously God can utilize to a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, if they're not yet at one with God, He can can't utilize them as much mm -hmm. as He could if they were at one with God. But, uh, but often, because they are closer to our condition, we are more accepting mm. of the assistance that they may desire to give us after, you know, if they're able to receive God's direction on that assistance, it's going to benefit us. Mm. Does God direct people who have had similar experience to us, uh, who may be cleared of that sin now, but would God choose someone like that to help us yes he'd yeah. prefer someone like that than someone who doesn't have an understanding of our particular mm -hmm. problems and mm -hmm. and the particular issues we face most of the time though god chooses people who have a similar nature to ourselves mm. so so they have similar way of seeing things than we that mm -hmm. we have and often that helps us to get connected with ourselves better yeah. so often it's a combination of a similar nature with similar history of injury and and that mm. person is often the best kind of person to assist us not always of course because obviously um you know there might be people in higher development who can assist us more but frequently it's to do with our openness to the assistance mm. so as we said by the time we're getting to this section of our material we're now talking about being quite close to god yeah but being still open to humans. Yes. So, you know, by now we're getting to this sort of state in the middle, if you like, mm -hmm. where we're really not uh, strongly desirous of a relationship with God, but we do wish to have some form of progress or some form of improvement in our condition, some form of improvement in our life. Oftentimes we wish to avoid pains that we have in our life. Mm -hmm. And these people can frequently help us go through that particular process. Mm. Um, in some ways, they can help us better than God can, but only because we're blocking God. You know? yeah. So God, God is now, we're, because of our own feelings and, and beliefs and actions towards God, God must communicate via other people to us. Uh, because we're blocking the direct mm. method of communicating with God. And here you're speaking specifically about people who are directed, are given clear communication from God, not just any old random person who's had a similar experience to me. Is that correct? Well, the ones who have had direct, clear communication from God have the ability to help us the most, obviously. Mm -hmm. But we must also mention that, you know, every person in this universe is guided by law. Yeah. And... And some persons have learnt specific laws. Mm -hmm. and, and while they might not be guided by God, they may have learnt about the specific law that affects you mm -hmm. and therefore be able to give you assistance personally about that particular law that affects you. Of course, it's still not going to be as effective as God, you know, giving you the information or God's love and God's truth coming to God from God directly. Mm -hmm. But it will at least allow you to get on the road or get started yeah. uh, working through particular issues. So, so these are methods that God is using because he can't have a personal relationship mm -hmm. with you because you're, preclu you're precluding it, you're stopping it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so God's got to engage these other methods because remember, God still wants a personal relationship with you. <laughs> even, <Yeah. laughs> even though you may not want one with God, yeah. God still would like to have one with you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, frequently God engages these methods to help. And there are literally billions of people, spirits involved in this particular process. Well, what about people on earth? I mean, do you feel directed by God to assist others in their forgiveness and repentance process? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, we're talking here mostly about spirits, but obviously 
and mostly because there are not a large number of people on earth who are in a condition of connection with God, yeah. who are hearing God at all mm. on earth. So, you know, obviously most of the, the help has to come via spirits at this stage, mm. um, which is um, sometimes unclear to the people on earth, of course, because they, they don't, you know, their spirit faculties are yeah. not highly developed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it has its limitations. Hmm. All right. Well, let's talk about um, some of the qualities of people who might um, be assisting us to forgive and repent sure. on God's behalf. Sure. So, so these people, they have a closer relationship with God than we do, whether yeah. it's uh, to the point of a woman or not, it's closer than us. That's yes. who God would ask to assist us. Yes. Um, and they're more sensitive to the conscience connection with God. Of course and more sensitive, therefore, to God's truth on any matter. That's right. They yep. know more of God's truth because they've personally experienced it. Yep. They've also had the life, they've got the advantage of having their full life on earth mm. over. Mm -hmm. So now they know what sin they reaped yeah. when they were on earth. They know the consequences of compensation. Mm. And they've started to engage that process of recovery mm -hmm. of the consequences of compensation. Yeah. So, so they understand all of that and the conscious mechanism is working better as mm -hmm. a result. You know, they've, they've cleared up a lot of their blockages with God enough to hear what the truth is about those particular matters. So naturally they have the ability now to share those truths with us mm. if we're open to receiving communication from spirits uh, rather than from God. Mm. Mm. Okay, they've also receive more of God's love and so therefore they're more sensitive to what's loving and what is not. Yeah, and this is of course assuming they have received God's love. So, you know, obviously if the Spirit hasn't, he could still be in a better condition of truth, mm -hmm. but not be, you know, be open to God's love. Mm. So he can only help you with certain truths. Mm. But, Could but, God direct him, though, in that case? God will still attempt to direct him, yes. Yep. God is going to use the most effective method to communicate with us that God has available. Mm -hmm. Now, for us, if we're quite blocked to God and we're quite blocked to spiritual matters and we're quite blocked to any communication about God or God's love or any of those things, then obviously the best person that God can help to connect with us is somebody who's also probably blocked to those things. Yeah. And if he can influence them in some way, yeah. and this is not now direct communication because he can't do that with them either, yeah. but if he can influence them in some way, which he can do, through words from other helpers mm -hmm. to that person direct or through, you know, influencing the person through, you know, their particular things that they're unblocked on, yep. then that person can give us some assistance. Mm. Of course, it's not the same level of assistance that a person who's completely unblocked to God's love can give us or give. to God's truth can give us. Yeah, got yeah. you. All right. Um, okay. Uh, we have written here that they're able to listen to God's voice via the conscience and therefore are able to recognise and respond to God's soul-based request to help another. So you kind of said that that may or may not be occurring. Yeah, well, uh, um, any person who's progressed even to the third sphere or the fourth sphere, but they haven't progressed with God, is still more open to the mechanism of the conscience. Mm. And the reason why they're more open is because they're in a state of closer, they're closer to the truths about ethics and morality mm. than we are. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. people generally on earth are. Yeah. So so what that means then is that those particular truths that they have discovered and understand can now be shared with us, mm -hmm. even though they might not be uh, understand that those truths are God's truths. Yep. They can still share us the truths as if they are the scientific truths of the universe, mm -hmm. which can help us still progress. Yep. Yep. So, yep. so of course, they can still help us. Yeah. 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 And finally, we had that they are able to communicate with us using physical methods that we're more open to responding to. So yes. does that work even in a spirit sense? Well, yeah, you could say the spirit body is a physical creation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I know people refer to it as metaphysical, but it is a physical creation. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a spirit body, even when we're on earth in the physical form, we have a spirit body. So now there can be spirit to spirit communication instead of soul to soul communication. So all communication with God is soul to soul. But all communication from spirits that are not yet connected to God is often the mixture of either some soul to soul, but also mostly some mind to mind mm -hmm. communication. So they, they can actually now communicate with our spirit body's mind, which mm -hmm. now can 
be it can you know cause thoughts to appear inside of your own mind and uh, and that can obviously help you sometimes if you particularly if you're in the process of doing something and all of a sudden you get some communication about it that's enlightening mm. that's some truth about it that can obviously help us to mm. make some shifts in in the way that we see things particularly when it comes to what we need to be forgiving for or what we need to repent for mm. so so these are all methods that god has this indirect method yes. of of get, helping us and also, also god will influence people on earth physical mm -hmm. people which also have a voice now that yeah. they can communicate to our hearing. Yes. So that that's obviously another way that, to, and it's even often more effective if God mm. can do that, influence a person to speak with you directly about a truth that often has a more powerful effect than even a spirit trying to speak with you about truth. Yeah. Yeah, I find that very interesting, mm. you know, the, the benefit we can have to, walk, to others if we have that personal relationship with God and engage our own forgiveness and repentance process, what influence we have on um, other people yeah. while we're still on earth. Because so few people- It's more powerful than a spirit on... influence can have. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Much more powerful yeah. because we're, we're using our voice and we're, they've got hearing as well. They mm. see us and- They can observe They us. can observe the changes yeah. in, in, in a person over the years mm. and they can observe, you know, what's going on for that person. So. You know, there's a lot of improvement, you know, in communication there, mm -hmm. which means that you can be more direct and more succinct and more plain speaking about specific matters. And that obviously also has the ability to help a person get to a point of forgiving and repenting. So even a person who's gone through some repentance, like remember a few sessions ago, we mentioned a lady who'd been raped and she's gone through the process of forgiving her rape, her rapist. Yes. Um, that woman, because she's gone through a process of forgiving her rapist and she's met and she's felt the benefits of doing such a mm -hmm. thing, she can now help and many other women have been raped yeah. in a in a truthful manner. Of course, yeah. not many of the women are very accepting of it, particularly yeah. if they're rageful, but but she can help probably more than some spirits can because mm -hmm. she's gone through the process, she's recognized a truth about forgiveness yes. and how it's affected her life. And now she can help other people go through the same thing. And that can have a powerful effect on people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, even her demeanor is quite, you know, she looks happier in herself than, than other the women. average woman yeah. even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And th then if you compare it with the guy who she's talking with, mm -hmm. who, who was the rapist, who yeah. she's forgiven, and he's had to go through some of the process of repentance. Mm for being a rapist and some he, not all yeah he, he's yeah. obviously gone through some otherwise yeah. he wouldn't even be able to talk Absolutely. about it right he couldn't and, acknowledge it was wrong and he does get attacked a lot which is yeah. an indication that um he has gone through quite a lot yeah. of it otherwise he wouldn't even put himself in that position yeah. Yeah. so so he can help a lot of men yeah. who have you know hurt women sexually yes. uh, because of his ability yes. now Having a spirit do his work would be a lot more difficult because yeah. he, there's a lot of more resistance to yeah. that yeah. than there is to him being able to speak it out sp spokenly. So, so and, you and know, another another um, uh, evidence that he has started to engage repentance is that he's quite passionate about doing exactly that, even though he's getting attacked. Yeah. So you know that's a very good indication mm. that he's gone through a fair bit already, because mm. uh, he'd never be able to do that otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that's a, this is a very good thing, right? Yeah. This, um, these people, two people who can help women who have been raped and help men who are rapists mm. um, and working together as a team, like I think they are doing, mm. um, they were can doing, even yeah. have a more powerful effect. Yeah. Um, the, you know, these kind of things can can help people a lot on earth mm. to come to a point of what I need to forgive and what I need to repent yeah. for and seeing the benefits of such actions. Yes. So, you know, um, there are many times people on earth can be influenced by God if they've obtained the truth on a certain matter. Mm. It doesn't necessarily require that they have a relationship with God, but if they do have a relationship with God, the help is going to be far more powerful. Yeah, mm. yeah, wonderful. How do spirit guides help me to forgive and repent? So um, the, here we've really covered a lot of that in our previous section, um, but if, do you want to give just a few brief specifics about um, how spirit guides help us in this forgiveness, repentance, what what they do to assist us? Well, there, there are certain times when we're in our day to day life that we are more open to receiving thoughts into our mind from external sources. Mm. And and sometimes it's a combination of a physical thing, um, 
that we need to hear mm-hmm. or, a, or a spirit-based communication that we need to hear. Now, if I give some examples. Mm-hmm. For example, a, a spirit may know that there's a certain show on the radio yeah. that if you turn the radio onto a certain channel, you'll hear this show and it might benefit you. Yeah. Right. So the guide, he will probably try to prompt you to turn on the radio and change the channel to mm-hmm. that channel if mm-hmm. he can. Mm-hmm. And he'll try to do it insistently until he's lost the opportunity and then obviously you won't try to do it anymore. It's so kind, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But um, so that's one way he'll do it. Mm-hmm. If he can do it directly. Yeah. Like. Have you think, gosh, I need to look at this. I'm, suddenly I can't stop thinking about this thing from my past. I need to look at that. That's right. Yeah. If he can do it directly and get you to look for things, that's even better. Mm. But if he can't do that, he, he will take opportunities at the right moments mm-hmm. to try to influence you to become aware of what you're not aware of, Yeah. right? Now, most people in their day-to-day life have that happen quite frequently, actually, mm. um, and more frequently than most people at this stage on Earth would, e- would ever admit to themselves, yeah. uh, because a lot of times they like to think their good ideas come from themselves somehow, <laughs> <laughs> while their bad ideas come from somewhere else. Yeah. But, you know, often their good ideas come from uh, some kind of spirit influence to help them you know, do the do a certain thing at a certain time in mm. order to have a certain realization, to mm. have a certain shift. Mm-hmm. So God's always trying to work with that guide, trying to help the person, and because they are not as constrained by time, they can predict certain things that might happen in the future, and they can also see, that, you know, that if they can influence you to take a certain thing you like mm-hmm. to be, that you might also, you know, have some kind of external event happen that in that influences you sometimes doing that thing yeah. that they can also communicate with you about and drop thoughts into your mind about to help you reason on the matter. Mm-hmm. So they frequently do that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so most of spirit guides help you, can help you sort of directly through opportunistic mm-hmm. uh, dropping of thoughts mm-hmm. and also an opportunistic dropping of thoughts into other people who are interacting with you. Yeah. So in other words, a person coming to you and you haven't talked, and all of a sudden you're talking about the very thing you need to, you know, have more understanding about. Yes. And that's often the other person being influenced by your guide Mm -hmm. to talk to you about a matter that you didn't think to raise. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking there about when it relates to forgiveness and repentance. Spirit guides helping us to gain awareness of the fact that there is something we need to forgive or repent. Presumably also... Awareness they, of truth. Remember, it, truth is an important part mm-hmm. of knowing what we need to forgive or repent for. What is the actual truth? And then presumably also the method, they can assist us with that as well through the same means that you were speaking Yes, about. and they obviously can influence certain things um, to an extent. It yep. depends on the openness of the individuals that are trying to influence. Mm-hmm. Um, and as long as it's done in harmony with love, mm-hmm. it, you know, God's laws allow it. So, uh, or and when I say in harmony with love, it has to be in harmony with our desires. So, you know, a spirit, you know, can influence us to have a to have a desire to do something good, as long as it's in harmony with our desires to a degree. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, other spirits can use the same law to influence to do something bad if mm-hmm. we have desire for badness in us as well. So mm-hmm. it works both ways. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to forgiveness and repentance. It can actually help us. Also, though, there's the other thing that happens with spirits oftentimes is that they do influence us down a negative path Mm. only for us to find out there's so much pain associated with it, which now means that we go, oh, we become aware Mm. of, wow, going down that road caused me pain. So would a spirit guide do that on God's behalf? No, a spirit guide wouldn't do it on God's behalf, Mm. but, but spirits might allow that to occur. A spirit guide might allow that influence. A spirit guide may allow another spirit Mm -hmm. to influence us down a wrong path Mm -hmm. because all of the work he's done (laughs) hasn't helped us. It's all fallen on deaf ears, right? So he may go, well, uh, you know, this is a situation now I could interfere, but it's I'm probably better off letting them have it now because they've attracted it and that's what they want. I'm better off letting them have it and letting them learn the lesson the hard way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the way they help us by letting us have the hard lesson instead of trying to, you know, assist us to have the softer lessons. Because yeah, um, yeah. some people only learn from the hard lessons. <laughs> and fun- unfortunately, the majority of people only learn from hard lessons. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as a spirit guide, you have a number of things at your disposal to assist the person to get into a state of recognising what is good and what is wrong 
and working out what they need to be sorry for and what they need to forgive others for. And it, it help, it, they can help you in different ways go through that particular process, mm -hmm. even if it means sometimes they have to step back and just let you go down a road that is quite negative yeah um because that's what you want to do yeah um and they just let you feel the full effects of that negative you know mm. road that you took mm. as well in mm. order for you to have some awareness that mm. can even happen mm -hmm. but they'll do whatever they can obviously they'll do the most loving things they can do first and and then then of course they have to step back and let the unloving desires you have take control and mm -hmm. see where that takes you and see whether that's going to cause you any and change. And kind of be there to help you at, when you finally become points. more receptive. Yeah, or, so yeah. as soon as you become open that this is a bad thing, bang, they'll be there saying, yeah. yes, you know, this is because yeah. this happened and yeah. you chose this because of this particular desire you have and so forth. Mm. So they'll often do that. You know, mm. They'll often show you what the cause of the problem is when you're open to receiving it, if yeah. you're open to receiving it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Mm. Let's move on to how people on earth can help me forgive and repent. So obviously these are people who are informed in some way in that they've Not engaged forgiveness and repentance. No, all we right. can talk about that. All yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, um, our question is, how do people on earth who sincerely engage the process of forgiveness and repentance help us to forgive and repent? And it sounds like there's another part. How do people on earth who haven't even engaged that process help us to forgive and repent? Yeah, there's basically the two parts. Yeah, and how, how, do, how can people on earth influence us and in what ways towards forgiveness and repentance? Yeah, well, as we've said uh, in previous discussions, influence is a good thing depending mm. on where it takes us, of course. Mm. You know, it can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. <laughs> Certainly being aware that we are influencers and are being influenced is a very good thing because then we yes. can start to analyse that. Yes, yeah. and the reality is, uh, you know, everybody on the planet influences somebody sometime. Yeah. So, you know, it's not a bad thing to be influenced. It's, it's where you take that influence of what decisions you make that turn it into a bad or a good thing. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it from a person who's gone through forgiveness and repentance themselves, obviously if they've gone through forgiveness and repentance on a certain issue themselves, then they are going to be well versed in the benefits of doing it because mm -hmm. they'll have felt the personal benefits. They'll also understand, you know, how they got themselves into that particular situation in the first place. Yep and what the causes were, mm -hmm. and they'll be able to assist us if they recognise us to be in a similar place. Mm -hmm. Of course, it depends very much upon our own personal openness to hearing any of this. Yeah. So if you're closed-minded or closed-hearted, then it's highly unlikely you'll hear a lot of it mm -hmm. or even attract any of it. But if you have a desire for it, yeah. then they can certainly impress upon you many things about the truth about forgiveness and repentance and the effects it can have in your life and the positive benefits and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. So obviously a person who's gone through the process themselves to a large degree can give us a large amount of assistance to how to go through it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And they also, through their outward appearance and their demeanour and their enjoyment of life and other things, demonstrate that they have gone through it, yeah. right? So, so we see the positive benefits in their life for having gone through it mm -hmm. as well. So that's one group of people who can assist us mm -hmm. on earth. The other group of people are the people who are dominated by law. You mm -hmm. know, there's the people who, you know, they go and do something wrong and the law crushes them or whatever, <laughs> you know, that's what it does. It, it, the law is there to try, and when I say crushes them, it's not the, probably the right terminology, <laughs> but what the law does is it has its effect in order to correct the yeah. behaviour. So, so it's correcting the behaviour and, and some of those people recognise it and yep. they do something about it and their life benefits and some of the people don't recognise and they keep doing the wrong thing and they, their life gets worse. Mm. Through observation, if we're a third party observing, I see, yes. you can see, oh yeah, a person who drinks too much, what happens to his life? Mm. A person who takes too much drugs, what happens to his life? Yeah. A person who rapes another person, what happens to his life? Mm -hmm. A person who, you even know, even a person who has an affair or embezzles money or goes hits to their war. kids or goes to war, what you, happens to their life? life. Yeah, we can see. Ah, that's what happens to their life. So there must be something not good in it, mm. right? We can at least see there's certain things that are not good. <laughs> well, and also it would be important to measure not just their life but their well-being because sometimes society wants to punish us for doing something 
that is in harmony with God's laws, but we have a greater sense of well-being from having done it, would you say? Yeah, of course, yeah. but it's rare. You know, most yeah. of the things we observe, we can see pretty plainly. Yeah, it's pretty, that was <laughs> pretty, pretty, yeah, yeah. It's pretty obvious that's <laughs> wrong because you can see the results, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This can help us yeah. to not make the same choices and decisions. Mm-hmm. You know, if you cheat on your wife when you're in a relationship and married, it's probably likely at some point if she finds out you're going to break up, right? Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. likely. Yeah. You know, if you want to, if you say you love your wife and you love your children, it's probably not a good thing to do. You need to fix whatever is going on with your wife, right? That would be better. And there, there's things that you can see quite clearly through other people's lives yeah. that that if you do the same thing in your life, you're probably going to get the same result. Yeah. So this can be very helpful mm-hmm. in, in seeing the truth. So this is the one way that uninformed people. Yes. <laughs> can help us. So so while informed people can help us mm. and they can probably help us more. Yeah. Because they can help us more directly. They can be more straight about it. They can also uh, say st- state more truth about it. Mm. The people that are helping us indirectly also are helping us mm. because they can show us through the bad example, mm-hmm. if you like, the negative example, the painful example mm. of what we should avoid. <laughs> <laughs> but we should remind our viewers, though, we're talking about how God is involved in the process of forgiveness and repentance. And obviously you're saying that people who have engaged this forgiveness and repentance, um, God can assist us indirectly through them. Obviously those people who haven't engaged in any forgiveness and repentance, it's God only is, God's laws. God is still indirectly yeah. helping yeah. us see the truth through yeah. the law. Yeah. So this is the beautiful thing about it, is beautiful, it really. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can, you know, you don't have to go through all this personal pain to see the results of a negative choice mm-hmm. or decision. Mm-hmm. You can examine the negative choice and decisions of others and go, "Wow, a lot of personal pain there." There's obviously something going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, logically, the, there's, you know, every like all the all the drug addicts I know, very few of them have a very good life. In fact, now that I think about it, none of them do. <laughs> and so, yeah. why is that? Right? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. and obviously there must be some kind of law. Or a principle involved, yes. right? You know, so so you can now see. Well, obviously, even if I don't believe in God, even mm-hmm. there's got to be some principle involved here. That oh, if I do those particular things, obviously there's some pretty negative effects. Yeah. Obviously, I should consider that in yes. my next decision making processes, yeah. and also consider it in my past. Yeah. Look at my past and go, ah, I was down going down that road, and and mm-hmm. I could have easily ended up like that person. You know, obviously I need to look at the reasons why I was going down that road, because if I don't address those particular reasons, there's a good chance that I might end up like that person. Mm. And that can help you be self-reflective, help you honestly analyze, and also help you see what you need to be repentant for, what you need to be sorry for and correct. What is a sin and what isn't, yeah. Yes, so it can help. It might not be direct, straight out, stated help, Yep. But it is help. Mm-hmm. And God's, as I've said, uh, by this stage, God's using any method possible <laughs> <laughs> to try to, to assist us. Because yeah. God loves us. He's trying yeah. to help us uh, to have these breakthroughs into realiza- realizations, you know. Mm-hmm. So while we might be a teenager as a young man and we might feel that having sex with lots of different women has, is great. By the time we get to our 30s and we see the, the people who are still living that life and how empty their lives are and how dissatisfying their lives are and so forth, we can see, ah, oh, there's the negative results of mm-hmm. that life, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. notwithstanding they might have diseases and other things that might mm-hmm. all occur as well. There is the negative result of their life in terms of an emotional way, a physical way. So we can go, obviously, there's something wrong with those choices Yes. for them to end up that way. Yeah. Now, now whether you, you want to call it God's laws or whatever else you want to call it, mm-hmm. there is still something wrong with it. And obviously, if I live my life the same way, there's a good chance I'll end up the same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that might cause you to pause and to say, uh, maybe I need to make some different calls here, different yeah. decisions. Yeah, that probably leads us nicely to our next section because we're going to talk about God's laws next. Mm.